Hey guys, it is Margaret. I am here for a super, super long overdue update. Um, I think, I really probably should have looked back. I think the last update I did was week 31 and this week is week 40. So nine weeks I've been gone. Um, my stats were a week before surgery. I was 266, the day of surgery I was 255.4, and this morning I was 169.7, 169.7, so, um, so that's where I'm at 40 weeks out. Um, I'm 5'7", I don't know if I ever even have said that in my videos, but this is crooked. So... If you watched my videos in the past, you might notice I'm in a different location. Uh, lots have been going on. Um, one of the main reasons that I was gone for nine weeks, and if you watched my videos up until that point, I was very vague as to um, emotional things that had been going on. I think I kind of hit on the fact that me and my husband had had issues and uh, we were struggling. We um, have gotten a divorce or in the process of getting a divorce and I have moved out. So I am in a new house. Um, so I guess that's probably the main reason that I've been gone for so long. One, I uh, wasn't ready to put it out there and I didn't kind of just want to do updates because it was kind of all consuming and I didn't want to be so vague with what was going on. So if you're watching this, and I know this is so, seems to be what happens when you have weight loss surgery. And just like everybody else who has gotten a divorce after weight loss surgery, I'm going to reiterate what they say in that it's not the surgery that causes divorce. What surgery does do, however, is it makes you uber focused on all the issues that you've had in the past that you covered up with food. Once, especially for me, food was my coping mechanism for every emotion that I had. I ate when I was happy, I ate when I was sad, I ate when I was stressed, I ate when I didn't know what the emotion was I was feeling. Um, I didn't know how to deal with my emotions um, and I still don't know how to deal with my emotions. I'm working on it, I am still in therapy um, and I have been absent from YouTube and from Facebook, uh, so I haven't had that support. However, I am back, um, and which I'm kind of excited about because uh, I've kind of missed y'all. So I'm back, and I plan to continue doing my weekly updates again. So hopefully, you will see me again next week. Um, but yeah, and I didn't want to come on and I didn't want to do some video where I cried the whole time and um, so I so I just kind of waited until the waves kind of calmed a little bit to come on here and where I could actually kind of tell you what happened in a way that I didn't have to sit here and cry the whole video because nobody wants to see that. I'm a very ugly crier. So... What happened? Um, my husband and I, or soon to be ex-husband, and I have been together since I was 16. Um, I had, and I have to be somewhat still careful because my son watches my videos. <laughs> so, um, but I had issues as a teenager and I kind of 
when I met my husband at 16, which obviously was not my husband then, but when I met him, I clung to that. I, with every fiber that I had, I lost myself in it. And I, my identity became whatever he wanted it to be. Um, and I say that in like he was controlling, and he didn't, he didn't control me. Um, I, I let him, I, I wanted him to, I guess, as for lack of a better term. Um, I, I needed that, I guess, at the time. He, he saved me from a bunch of other bad habits that I was into, and and in a way, you know, he brought me away from that. And that was a good thing. And I needed that. And, um, oh, I don't want to cry. Um, and so I just kind of, I followed him. I, like a puppy, you know, I, whatever it was he wanted to do, I was there. I didn't want I didn't want to do things for myself. I didn't want my own friends. I didn't, I wanted to be whatever he wanted me to be because I didn't want to lose him. And I think at 16, that's probably what you do. But the problem is, is that never changed in our relationship. Um, I followed him through my 20s and, and through my 30s and I think with the weight loss surgery and on top of that, we have three kids and my identity somewhere along the way never got found because who I was at 16, I didn't want to be anyways. I was in, you know, I was into drugs and he saved me from that and that's not who I wanted to turn out to be either. So I think I left one identity that I didn't want to be to immediately try to become this person that he wanted me to be and never really tried to find who I was, which, you know, I guess in retrospect isn't his fault. He didn't force me to be that person. I just kind of let it be. Um, I'm very easy, go with the flow, and I've always been a people pleaser, so I always kind of put my wants and my needs on the back burner. And I think with surgery was really the first time that I was like, I'm going to do this for me. And he was against it. And now I know he was against it for other reasons than what I thought it was. Um, he was worried that something was going to happen. Um, I internalized it that he didn't want me to become me which was not the case, um, but hang on, let me take my shoes off. <sighs> so, I think because I never, I never, I went to college, but I had a dorm room that I never stayed in because I didn't want to, I didn't want to meet new friends, I wanted him, I wanted to be with him, so, I never got out there, I never made friends, I never tried to become my own person outside of our relationship, and then then we had kids, and then that became who I was, and I was a mom, and I was a wife, and I was okay with that, um, until I wasn't, <laughs> and I guess that's kind of, um, I think that eventually that catches up to you and along the way I ate and I ate and I ate and I ate and I always I never was happy with myself um you know I made accomplishments uh I worked for him for 10 years and that that was a mistake um I think that that really I think our biggest downfall, and I'm not going to make it through this video without crying, um, I think our biggest downfall was nothing on him.
think it was what I put him at. I put him on this pedestal and he's he's older than me, which I don't know that that matters, but he's five years older than me. And so I always had him on this pedestal because I don't know, he kind of he kind of rescued me from what I was at 16 and made me into this other person. And I think had it just been that, it would have been fine. But then I worked under him for so many years as my boss that we got really good at turning our emotions off at work. And we never turned them back on. And we did that for many years. And I guess about six years ago, five years ago, it kind of all came to a head. And it's really never been the same since then. And I think about five years ago is when I realized that I had never really became who I was. And I kind of freaked out a little bit. And I think ever since then, it kind of had, you know, it kind of woke me up. Because I think before then I never had really even, I never even had recognized that there was a problem. And I think once you recognize that there's a problem, you want to do something to fix it. And I never, I think the both of us had tried different things along the way. And I think it really just boiled down to that we're just really good friends. <laughs> and it takes more than that in a marriage than just to be really good friends. <sighs> and I think for me, I was always scared to find out who I really was because I had never taken that journey before. I had always hid that person with food and hid behind the my self-image and that and had never put myself out there um, to really even discover who that person was or is. And I think that, you know, I had lost weight along the way, but I never... I would get down to about 200 pounds, 198, before I would just totally self-sabotage myself and gain it all back. And I had done that at least three times, if not more. Um, three or four times for sure. And um, I think when I decided to have weight loss surgery, I did watch other people's YouTube videos, and I did know that this was out there, <laughs> like to put it that way, but you know, people had said if you have issues before you have weight loss surgery, or if you've had issues, whether it be marriage, whatever they are, but especially marriage, if there were problems before weight loss surgery, the weight loss surgery will only amplify them. So, I say that to say, if you are pre-op, and you're thinking about having weight loss surgery, and you're married, I think that you should sit down, and this is something I didn't do, I think you should sit down with your partner and say, hey, you know, I know we've had problems in the past, and there is a chance that once the weight comes off, they're going to resurface. Why do they resurface? Well, for me, the why was just that. I had only let myself get to a certain point, and they didn't resurface until I got past that point. And I don't know if it was like a mental line in the sand for me, like... 198 and then I'm going to gain it all back 
And as long as I stay above that, I'm good. But I think that was my comfort zone. And once you get past your comfort zone, everything that you had hid with food and with your weight and with everything else is totally exposed. I I felt like what like a turtle must feel like when it loses its shell. Like I felt scared and exposed and raw emotion of things that had happened in the past, like way in the past, like they had just happened. And it was like night and day. I mean, I, you know, I stepped on the scale one morning and it was like 195. And then like the next morning, it like all, like literally the shell had been ripped from me at night. And being with someone who had never struggled with their weight and wasn't part of the community and didn't know what I was going through and didn't know how to deal with it was hard. And so I turned to people and community that did know what I was going through. And I think also that that's part of the problem because not only did we have issues in the past, but I, I was mad at him. I, I didn't want, I didn't want to turn to him because he didn't understand. So I turned to people who did. And that only made it worse because that only pushed me farther away. And, um, and I think in the end it just was our undoing. And it just got worse from there. And, I mean, we're good. We have three kids together and we're still really good friends. And I hope that we're always still really good friends. Um, does it make it any easier? I think divorce is always hard. Um, no matter if you hate each other or if you're friends. <coughs> but, um... I think that, you know, it's, it's new. I've been in this house for two weeks now. Saturday, I think, will be two weeks. Um, and it's an adjustment. And sometimes I like it, and then other times I'm scared because I'm still, you know, I'm 35 years old, and... It's the first time I've ever been by myself. I've never, I've never had my own. I've never lived on my own. I went straight from living with my parents to living with him. I mean, <clears throat> I never, I've never been on my own. So, it's, I'm sorry, I did not want, this is why I've waited to make this video. Ugh, but. So, anyways, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> um, so that's what's been going on with me. Um, the weight is still coming off. Like I said, I was 169 this morning. I kind of had had a stall around 181, 179. And then I had another stall, <coughs> stall around 175. I was 175, 174, 175, 174, one, um, for probably like four weeks. Um, but, uh, oh. So anyways, so with the stress of that and not being able to turn to food, I've started smoking again. Um, which I'm not proud of. And I don't, I don't plan to continue. <laughs> Um, but I, I think as an addictive personality, um, I don't think that ever goes away. I think that that's a constant struggle. You know, I, I had drug addictions in the past and I smoked cigarettes, um, in the past when I was a teenager. And the second I quit that, I immediately picked up food and it had been food ever since. 
So when I dropped the food, I think I was okay with it. Ooh, my battery's low. Let's see if I can plug this in. Um, I think that I was okay with it until I hit that emotional wall and um, I did not know how to deal with it and I didn't see it coming and I knew that it was a chance for it to get there because everybody else said that it happens and it's for real and anybody who tries to tell you that weight loss surgery is the easy way out is full of shit and they've never had weight loss surgery <laughs> um, because it's not the easy way out. Um, it's a tool and if you don't use it the right way then you're only going to lose to a certain point. I'm 10 pounds away from my goal weight at 40 weeks out. And, you know, I'm proud of that. And I think that I probably could have already been to my goal weight if I was doing everything that I need to be doing. I'm not logging my food. I'm, I eat like crap most of the time. But, I mean, it's a tool. So... I have good days and I have bad days, but even on my bad days, they're nowhere near what my bad days were before. You know, today I uh, went to lunch with some friends and the dessert special was banana pudding cheesecake with um, vanilla wafer crust. And I was like, holy crap, that sounds amazing. And the fat girl in me ordered it. <laughs> and I was stuffed before I had even even eaten half of my meal, a fourth of my meal, I was stuffed and I took it to go and it sat in the refrigerator and I ended up eating a bite of it. But I was good with a bite. Like in the past, I would have eaten my whole meal and every single bite of the cheesecake and then probably something else, I don't know. Um, so I think it's okay to allow yourself to do that sometimes, you know, especially if you've had an emotional day or you know, I think you can't cut yourself off from everything. And I think it's just at this point, it's more about, for me, it's more about trying to find out who this new person is. Who this, I've, I'm in a weight now I've never been, ever. I, I mean, I'm, I've obviously have been 169 before, but I probably, not even lying, was probably in the sixth grade. Um... I'm wearing a size 8 skirt right now. Never been a size 8. Ever. Um, I went straight from like kid sizes to like <clears throat> 14 adults. You know, I never, I never been an 8. Um, I remember being a flower girl in the, I want to say I was in 5th grade, 5th or 4th grade. And I remember that my grandmother had to buy me a dress and it was the dress that she wanted me to wear was like I had to get it altered because it was way too long. But it was a regular size and it was a size 5. And so it was like a junior's size 5. And that was when I was like in the 4th grade. Um, and I'm in an 8 now um, at 35. So I was probably this weight literally probably when I was in the sixth grade. That's probably the last time I was this weight. So I, um, and I bought a couple size eight shorts the other day. Um, I have some tens, but they're starting to get a little bit big. I notice now, like with every few pounds, like when I was, so I'm 169, when I was 175, like my tens fit good. So five pounds makes a difference at this point. Um, I know when I was bigger, I needed to lose like 15, 20 pounds to get into a different size. But now it seems like every few little pounds is like another size. So um, I guess at this point, I guess my goal would be like a size 6. Um, it originally was a 10, which obviously that's not it because my 10s are, most of them are kind of baggy at this point. Um, but yeah, so weight loss, you know, I mean, it's coming off. I'm... It's a struggle, and it's part of why I'm coming back on here and back on Facebook. And, oh my God, this video is 25 minutes long. You're probably not even still watching. I'm going to wrap it up. 
because it's 25 minutes long. <laughs> so I will be back next week and um, leave me a comment. And like I said, I'm back on Facebook. So, um, and I'm back on here. So leave me a comment and let me know what y'all have been up to. And I'll see y'all next week. Bye.